Hey guys, happy Friday! And I got a great little short 15 minute one for you today. I was invited to a very large group in a huge hall uh, of citizens who are concerned about the future after the past two years. So I gave them a talk, they asked for something with a health focus, but also focusing on resilience and empowerment, moving into a less certain future. So I banged out some pretty hot stuff, I think, just 15 minutes, so enjoy. And please do remember to like and to subscribe and hit the notification bell also and share with people. That's what it's all about. Only, of course, if you like this video. Here we go. So. I won't talk about COVID now. I'm going to talk about health. And that's not a mistype there, the stakes are high because I'm going to mention how incredibly nutrient dense meats are. They do not cause cancer, they do not cause any disease or heart disease and they're really important going forward that you get your meat, fish and eggs because th that nutrient density will make you stronger, healthier and more resilient. So just really briefly, heart attack and stroke, uh, this is the causes of death. Heart attack and stroke are obviously huge. Kidney disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's, which is type 3 diabetes, right? They are intimately related to the heart attack and stroke and what drives those things. Then you've got the cancers, terrible disease for sure. Uh, but the cancer causes, there are many, but some of the bigger ones that you can affect with your diet and lifestyle are the same drivers that drive heart attack and the other things. It's a thing called insulin resistance. And then chronic respiratory, COPD, you may be familiar. That's a dead giveaway for insulin resistance. So what I'm just trying to say is there's a common soil of drivers of metabolic disease that drive most of the deaths in our modern world. And it's very addressable. Accidents, I can't help you with that. You just have to stay safe, you know, to avoid that cause of death. So today's talk yeah, addresses all of this mortality, but much more. It's not just for health and longevity that this is important. It's important for empowerment. So your brain is part of your body, believe it or not. And when you carry metabolic disease that drives all of this problem, you also, your brain will not work nearly so well. Depression, poor mood, poor sleep. It all comes from the same kind of source, or at least one major source, which is insulin resistance, metabolic disease. So dependency is a terrible thing, and we see now in this new world that's emerging, dependency is even more catastrophic for your future than it was before. You've got to get, go to the opposite of dependency. You've got, you got to get away from any kind of places where you're really dependent on government and medical, etc. You've got to avoid these guys, if you can, if you need a doctor, that's okay. But improving your health will make you less dependent on all of the systems that we've seen fall so catastrophically during COVID. These guys, I don't need to tell you what a problem they are. So again, there is almost no need for chronic disease medications for all of what I listed if you fix the problem yourself. Uh, again, hospitals, you go in there, can you wear a mask? You've got to wear a mask for our safety. You know, you don't want to be dependent on having to spend time in hospitals with diseases you could have to a large extent avoided. And of course, depression and, you know, feelings of futility. There is nothing like metabolic disease to drive weakness in your just your personal mentality. So again, that you, that you can address that too for the kind of challenging world we're entering in the future. Get rid of it. So I've spoken all over the world. That's in Israel when I didn't have my lockdown weight on. I was a little more slim. And I won't go through the detail of insulin resistance, but it's the primary driver. And my story, I'm going to fly through here actually in interest of your time, but basically, in 2013, I got some really bad metabolic tests. They're standard tests. And I went to three doctors in succession because I couldn't get any answers. And essentially, I only got things like eat more healthy whole grains, eat less fat, maybe less meat, right? Which was the opposite of what the problem was. And some other stuff. But I realized something that was huge to me. 
I realized that in the heart of medicine, there is an enormous hole, an enormous gap. Now, I didn't know what it was yet, even though I have a biochemical engineering degree and I worked in, in FDA-regulated healthcare for years. I didn't know exactly what these things meant. I just knew they were way out of whack. But if the experts in a field clearly do not understand their own standard measurements, there must be something huge there to find. And there was. So I went to PubMed, ResearchGate, I had corporate logons in my position, and I researched these blood measures, and I went through the classic root cause approach to find out what their impact was in terms of morbidity or mortality, and what their root causes were in the human machine. A few weeks of obsessive research, this is me in Singapore in 13, I'm a little more fat there, in fairness, and I'm pretty angry because it took me around two or three weeks, admittedly obsessively, to find out that nearly everything we've been told about cholesterol, fat, and diet, and meat is complete bullshit. And I was shocked. I almost thought, it can't be, but I, but I verified it afterwards. The first way I verified it basically, and I'm just going to show this from Professor Feynman in New York, became a good friend of mine. You can see there type 2 diabetes in the pink rising up over the last three or four decades. It's a catastrophe. And type 2 diabetes drives most heart attacks. And I told you how heart attacks and their cause are related to all the other stuff. But look what happened in the last few decades. And look what happened to red meat consumption. That's an anti-correlation. It's not just not correlated. It's going the opposite direction. And as Professor Feynman used to joke, he said, Ivor, you have all the science, I have all the science, we all speak on all of the metabolic science. But a simple eyeball test can tell you that we're being told absolute nonsense about meat and health. So anyway, meat going right down, it, disease exploding up. OK, I can't make it any clearer. Sugar, refined carbs, and industrial vegetable oils, or seed oils, the heart-healthy oils, those three are the devil's triad. They are the problem, and they make up most of ultra-processed foods, which are most of the foods in your supermarket now. And in the British Medical Journal two years ago, three years ago, 60% of UK food calories consumed are ultra-processed foods, the devil's triad. And you wonder why we have an epidemic of chronic disease. And that includes mental disease to a large extent, too. So here's what I did. I took a diet that had too much orange juice, which is pure sugar, probably eating a bit too many sweets as well. And I was eating way too much carbohydrate, breads, pastas, modern bread for sugar, fruits, rice. And I was eating the brown versions. And that's, that's not much better than the white versions. So way too much carbohydrate. I was essentially insulin resistant, diabetic. All I did, and because I'm an engineer and I've run experiments and, and stuff for, for decades, I did not change anything else. I did no extra exercise, did not change my alcohol intake. I specifically only changed what I ate. And I'll show you in a minute what happened. So I switched to much more meat, fish, and eggs, real food, because I discovered that was the stuff for longevity. I got rid of vegetable oils, switched to olive oil and, and lard and tallow and all the real stuff. Cream is fine. Butter is back in a big way. Olives, avocados, high fat foods, sardines, blah, blah, blah. That was the main, that was an ancestral human diet I switched to. I cut out all the carbs and just ate low sugar vegetables. And then I cut out the sweets and the, the orange juice. The orange juice was blowing up my liver, actually. It's, it's got as much sugar as Coca-Cola per liter. So that's what I went to. I didn't know there was paleo or low carb at the time, but I had essentially gone thinking I was the one who discovered this, which is outrageous. Of course, there was a movement all over the world. I didn't know that. But you can see down the bottom, the vegetables are on the bottom. But to be honest, I wasn't bothering with a whole lot of those. It was mainly the proteins, meat, fish, and eggs. That is the magic. So here's what happened. There's my GGT. I won't explain it. I, I was essentially diabetic, I discovered. Went to that diet, nothing else. Six weeks later, the GGT collapsed. Two weeks later, I did a recheck to see was it still going down. And it was. Eight weeks. That's not all. My ferritin collapsed, the other bad marker. 
My cholesterol got beautiful, right, the ratios. My blood pressure went from hypertensive, they're always trying to get me on drugs, dropped down to normal with no extra exercise. My weight fell right down because my appetite disappeared. I was skipping meals with impunity. It was easy because I was eating real food, no processed food. And basically the waist came down as well, which was nice. I need to work on that a bit now again. But that's what happens when you get a true root cause. A true root cause to a problem doesn't just fix the problem. It fixes loads of other stuff in your process quality that you never even expected, like the weight loss. I wasn't even thinking of weight loss. So you can take at this, we have thousands of papers now published around the world which prove this is true, and reversal of diabetes, people in their thousands. So again, what this is about is not just health and longevity, it's about becoming less dependent on this system that we know now, sadly, has become, to varying degrees, corrupted, right? And again, for mental health, mental acuity, it totally transforms your mental acuity, your joie de vivre, your, your resilience, the whole outlook you have when you do this, lose a load of weight and fix your, your machine, essentially. So that's kind of what I'm selling here. This kind of person is not an ideal fighter for the world that's coming. Not ideal. I just grabbed that from the web earlier. No, I don't think it's a trans thing, it's, it's just a fat guy. <laughs> Though I do see a bit of a man breast there, yes. Okay, this is the kind of guy you want to try and be, or gal, right? Now, of course, you don't want to be, that's ridiculous. But if you push this to the limit and only eat meat, fish and eggs, and eat no processed food, and also do weight training, which is way more healthy for you and easier than running big laps, you know, you will move towards that. It's inevitable because that's the human machine for all of evolution, you know? You, you, you look at uh, people in the 70s and 60s and Woodstock, you know? It, you can go back there, but you have to only eat real food. So, bottom line message, you cut out all that crap, and that includes bread, bagels, all the refined carbohydrates, the vegetable oils, absolutely eliminate. It's all junk food. You've been told McDonald's is junk food. You go into McDonald's, throw away the bun of a double burger, and what you got left is good food. It's pure Irish meat, and there's no real additives, right? The drink, the chips, all of that is junk food, all the breads. So that's what you eliminate. It, I'm not saying it's easy. It requires a complete habit change. But you do get back all those delicious ancestral foods. And organ meats, as an example, are nutrient powerhouses. An egg is an absolute superfood. The magazines say it's kale, you know, green bits of leaves. It's just nonsense. An egg has everything. Organ meats are packed with nutrients. So that's what you do, essentially. And when you go to that and you do exercise ideally, a lot of people won't do it. So the food is the main thing by far anyway. There are, a gentleman earlier mentioned, potassium is very important, a lot of people low on it. Magnesium is crucial. Probably 80% of people are, are insufficient because the vegetables nowadays, after the last 40 years of intensive agriculture, they've lost 80 plus percent of their minerals. And we used to drink well water for millions of years, full of minerals. Now you get the stuff from the tap. It's got nothing but maybe fluoride or something. <laughs> so. Uh, fish oil as well. Supporting the farmers, I'll switch a bit from that diet, that's an important message. I've been working with farmers for the last couple of years with a friend who's an ag consultant giving lectures like this. We've got a bunch of farmers who have reversed their type 2 diabetes, including the president of the Cattle and Sheepmen's Association. And Dermot Kelleher was something like 21 stone, he lost 4 stone, his blood glucose came right down, he reversed his diabetes, and he said, I could not work more than a half day in the last few years, and now I can work a full day and more. So just speaking to the mental health, he said that was the biggest thing for him. His whole attitude changed, his energy came back by fixing this epidemic problem. But supporting farmers, farmers markets, making networks, get close to the source of the food, take those asshole supermarkets out of the chain, 
and that will be something maybe very important in the coming years and they need support they're being attacked generator I'll just throw in a bit of doomer stuff I picked up a diesel generator I wired it into the main circuit in the house and it might become useful at times in the coming years and a diesel one is twice the price of petrol but I got 3,000 litres of diesel you can't store petrol so keep that in mind and last thing, I'm, last thing I'll mention is canning. I haven't started it yet, but I think this is amazing. So basically you can get meats and delicious foods, make dinners in big quantities. You simply can them in these two-part lid uh, jars. They're good for three to five years minimum with no refrigeration. No refrigeration. And it goes back to our evolution. You know, we've got jerky, we've got all these kind of fermented foods. Hundreds of thousands of years, humans, all tribes around the world had their own forms of keeping food. So if you build this up, you can pull from your stash to use it up and then keep replenishing on the back end. But when the music stops and everyone's looking for a frickin' chair, you'll have a big stock of the most nutrient-dense meats, fish, eggs on the planet in your own private kind of reserve. So I just think that's a fantastic thing and I'm going to be looking into that more rice and stuff like carbohydrates and rice it's dry goods it stores anyway don't waste your jar capacity with this kind of stuff just buy it in bags so anyway that's our book we came out in 18 just if anyone's interested it goes into massive detail on all aspects of what I said and a lot more uh, if you're interested and with that that's it I hope I'm not too far over Hope you enjoyed that and got some tips and please do remember to like and comment below, subscribe and hit the notification bell if you haven't done so and share to help others. As always, huge appreciation to my PayPal and Patreon supporters and anyone else who can help support my kind of journalism, investigation, research and it's all towards helping the population resolve metabolic distress, metabolic ill health, and all of the diseases of modernity, which we can really effectively address. And I also do quite a bit of countering kind of corporate misinformation and, you know, all of the mass media and legacy media kind of nonsense that gets out there. So really appreciate the support and till next time.